rivalry football games in college football the Florida Gators and the Bulldogs of Georgia as far as the other conditions today besides the 75 degrees humidity at 41 percent the winds at eight miles an hour and they are coming in from the east we're looking at Vince Dooley head coach of the University of Georgia career record 174 wins 65 losses and uh, as far as ties are concerned for Mr. Dooley nine he is the Dean of Southeastern Conference coaches as won six SEC championships and here we look at Galen Hall the unbeaten unflappable man from Penn State 15 0 and 1 so he is unbeaten at Florida the Associated Press Southeastern Conference coach of the year last year and as Jim points out in the pregame show these guys are virtually the stars of today's game it's, it, there's no doubt that these are two of the best sideline coaches in college football in terms of making adjustments during the ball game not only do they get their young men prepared during the week but they know how to make decisions during a ball game that can win a game and so it's a tremendous matchup between uh, a young head coach Galen Hall and a fellow like Vince Dooley who's been at uh, Georgia for 20 some years well here you look at the fact that Florida has beat Harvard and Georgia back to back only five times however Florida is coming off a big win as far as last year is concerned Florida has never beaten Auburn and Georgia back to back in consecutive seasons but then again the Gators have done a lot of things this year they've never done before and last year as well obviously uh, they built upon the base they established last year last year to make a run for that national championship this year they are unbeaten in 18 straight games so they're going for 19 today Florida lost the toss and will receive and there you're looking at the alligator your friend the alligator coming across the field there James as the Florida Gators are puffed up and ready to go as we get ready for the kickoff at Jacksonville's Gator Bowl great crowd super weather you just couldn't ask for more as far as college football is concerned a great setting in the Gator Bowl not too far from downtown Jacksonville and looking out from our press box view at the St. John's River, it's just a super setting for college football. Well, it can't be more beautiful than this, and you got 35,000 in red and 35,000 in orange, and as we mentioned before, red and orange clash, but nowhere do they clash greater than in the Gator Bowl. Well, there you see some of the fans as we wait for the kickoff in just a few moments as we get ready to get our football game underway, and this, of course, is a tense moment for both of these teams as we look at the Bulldogs of Georgia in the traditional red and as they call him, Ricky Nateel, the return man for the University of Florida, averaging 20.9 per return. So there he is, the young man from Archer, Florida, and getting ready to kick off for the University of Georgia. It'll be Steve Crumley. Also back with uh, Ricky Nateel today will be Wayne Williams, the freshman return man from Titusville, Florida. As Crumley puts the football on the tee, gets ready to kick off and get this great football game on afternoon in Jacksonville's Gator Bowl. We look at the Florida team, they're pumped up, standing along the sidelines, getting ready to go as Crumley gets ready to move to the football. He boots it off and it's going to go high. It's going to be taken short at the 12-yard line. He's at the 15 and across the 20 to the 22-yard line. So the University of Florida will up there at the 22-yard line. Lewis Oliver returned the football. Kerwin Bell, 116 completions, and that's out of 188 attempts. And here we're looking at the offensive starters, Jim. Yeah, two powerful senior running backs, Neil Anderson and John L. Williams, dominating that uh, offense for the Gators. With Kerwin Bell, the player of the year in the SEC, there you see the big beef up front for the Gators. A lot of strength in terms of size in that offensive line, and they've matured well as they progress through this 85 season. First and 10 for the Gators at the 22-yard line. They're in their own territory. And uh, getting the pitch will be Neil Anderson off the left side. And he has hit and brought down as the right side of the Georgia defensive line brings him down. Jake Richardson, a senior right guard, is credited with the tackle. And here we're looking at the big guys starting up front for the University of Georgia. Well, Georgia has that uh, split six defense. They put a lot of beef up front, try and neutralize that running game. And you see uh, Tony Flack, a fourth-year senior, as, as a cornerback for the Bulldogs. So the advance was to the 24-yard line for two yards. It's second down and call it eight yards. A split backfield now behind the starting quarterback, Kerwin Bell, as the motion man comes to the near side. And now here is Bell looking to throw. Dumps it quick one off at the 20-yard line. He's across the 30 and to the 32-yard line with a carry. And that was John L. Williams with the catch and the run. And Bill Mitchell, the weak side linebacker, made the tackle. 
tackle, John L., is an all-purpose back. He scored three touchdowns and has had some good receptions this year for the Gators, and he was a key man last week in the victory over Auburn. We'll look at it again. Well, the Gators' passing game is their strength, and they drop back right away and have this screen pass, which catches Georgia a little bit by surprise. John L. Williams picks up some good yardage. It's third and short. At the 31-yard line, eye formation now for the Gators, and the give-off goes to Anderson, and uh, he looks like he's got the first down. Calvin Ruff brings him down. Not a whole lot of room there, but he got what he needed, it looked like, that first down. Uh, they are calling a timeout for a possible measurement. Well, it's going to be uh, close, but Florida's got it. And they get the nod, they get the first down, and uh, here the crowd gives them a great hand as they advance the football between the 32 and the 33-yard line. They're going to spot it the way it's pointing at the 33. It's first and 10 now for the Gators. No score as we're just into the first quarter. 13 minutes and 15 seconds to play in this first period. High formation for Florida as Kerwin Bell looks at the Georgia defense, as Jim calls it, the split six. And Kerwin Bell rolling and looking, and he's going to go way long, and it's going to go out of bounds. Ray McDonald was the intended receiver down deep. Tony Black for the University of Georgia. And Georgia did a nice job jumping on John L. Williams in the flat right there. Generally, he's a secondary receiver. Kerwin Bell has a lot of success finding John L. Williams in the flat, but that time the Bulldogs had him covered, so Kerwin wisely just threw the ball in the stands, not giving up the uh, sack. The ball remains right there at the 33-yard line. It's second down and 10 now for the Gators as they come, and the Georgia beef digs in. The slot man to the bottom of your screen would be Ray McDonald, number nine, as Bell goes with a split backfield behind him on the pro offense. Bell's looking. He's out there to John L. Williams. It's complete to the 40-yard line. Calvin Ruff makes the tackle for the University of Georgia along with John Brantley. Brantley, 42 a moment ago, a sophomore from Wildwood, Florida. Well, you see the Gators with three wide receivers. That's a new formation as far as the first quarter here is concerned. If Georgia has a problem, it's stopping the pass. Uh, they play well as a uh, defense, but they have had problems stopping that pass. Third down and two. Ball on the 41-yard line now for the Gators. As Kerwin Bell sends his team out of the huddle, he will send Wickman to the left to the top of your screen. A matter of fact, uh, as we talk, Georgia is ninth out of ten teams in pass defense in the SEC. High formation as Neal goes in motion to the top of the screen, and it is Bell giving off to Neal Anderson. not too far from this Gator Bowl, will be the punter averaging just under 45 yards per boot. So Criswell waiting for the snap, and John Little, the return man, to get it high. And he calls for it at the 22-yard line and drops down the one knee, and so the Georgia Bulldogs will put the football in play. And uh, they put it in play at the 20 yard line it'll be first down and 10 or pardon me the 22 yard line it'll be first and 10 a 38 yard boot for Ray Criswell well Auburn doesn't have that Bo Jackson or Dalton Hilliard tight back in the backfield but they have four young men that rotate a lot and pick up uh, the yards via the ground game that's their strength the running game and the Gators on defense have had the power to stop that running game here to four James Jackson at quarterback for the Dogs as they send the motion man down and the give-off goes to the fullback David McCluskey right up the middle and he is stacked up by the Gator defense at about the 28-yard line Scott Armstrong and Leon Pennington combined. Jackson, by the way, a fine ball player for them. 35 of 78, 561 yards. Not a great passer, but a great athlete. And there you look at the up front, or rather the uh, skill position people for Georgia, and now the up front guys, and they got some beef too. Peter Anderson, All-American candidate at center for the Bulldogs. Second and five from the 28-yard line as a quarterback. Jackson comes to the near side, and Florida brings him down behind the line of scrimmage. Jervis Williams, the sophomore from Palatka, in there to make the stop. Well, James Jackson knows how to run that football. He's got uh, 319 yards rushing this year, but... Jarvis Williams is right there to meet him on the line of scrimmage. A tremendous job by Jarvis. As you see, Patrick Miller, Mitts, Pennington, Ross, a great strength of that Gator defense. Number one in total defense in the SEC. 
Very deserving of that honor, too. Third and seven at the 26-yard line. The Gators have won four straight games in the Southeastern Conference this year. A motion man now to the bottom of the screen as Jackson gives off to, once again, the tailback, and that is Liars eight. And he goes off the left side and gets some good yardage across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Patrick Miller and Leon Pennington do bring him down for the University of Florida. First down for Georgia. runs a lot of backs in and out, so their guys don't have great individual stats. No, they have great uh, average per carries, but they don't have those total yards that you look for because they alternate a lot in that backfield. First and 10 at the 34, no score in the game. 10 minutes and five seconds to play in the first half. The pitch is going to go to Tate again, and he tries it on the left side and gets across the 35-yard line to the 36 before he's brought down by Pennington and Alonzo Johnson. Well, Georgia wants to get those running backs outside every weekend. That tailback, his job is to get outside when he can and use that athletic ability to sprint down the sideline. A lot of pressure on the cornerbacks and uh, to come up and force those tailbacks inside so their teammates can make the tackle on defense. Second and eight at the 36-yard line. As we look at Jackson, the quarterback for Georgia, he gives off to McCluskey and McCluskey over right guard and give him to the 40-yard line before the Gators bring him down. Keith Williams from Milton, Florida, and Arthur White from Frostproof combining. McCluskey averaging 5.6 yards per carry. He scored three touchdowns this year. Bulldogs averaging close to 300 yards per game rushing that football. That's what they do very well, and they have had a history of that at Georgia. Third and five at the 39, nine minutes to play in the first period, and still no score as Jackson rolls out, hangs onto the football, and turns the field and comes to the 49-yard line, picks up the first down for Georgia. Jarvis Williams, Alonzo Johnson make the tackle. Well, anytime you sprint out and you have running ability at the quarterback position, you put a lot of pressure on that cornerback. There he was dropping back in pass coverage, and the linebacker was not able to come up in time to make the tackle, and you saw James Jackson pick up a key first down. First and 10 at the 49-yard line for the Dogs as they come out of the huddle now, and uh, at the quarterback spot, it is Jackson. He goes with the eye formation, and they go with the motion man now to the top of your screen, and Jackson being pressed and brought down behind. right there and he's the guy that uh, made the recovery of the loose ball Tommy Duhart also in on the play looked like Jeff Roth uh, from the nose guard position putting great pressure on the quarterback there let's see what the call is flag illegal procedure is against Georgia decline Florida gets the football so a big break here for the Florida offense uh, big games decided many times by big turnovers watch uh, Leon Pennington coming in on the blitz 45, uh, the quarterback did not make the exchange. Jackson had problem handing the ball off. And uh, Tommy Duhart pounces on the football, the big sophomore from Bell Glade. So that gives the Florida offense the football at the Georgia 40-yard line. Big break for them. 8.25 to play, first period. Neal, 21, in motion, first and 10, on the 40 for the Gators. A little bit of confusion in that formation right there. And now here comes Neal back. The pitch goes to the trailing back, Anderson, and he turns across the 40 down to the 38-yard line. Alvin Ruff, the left defensive end, making the tackle for the University of Georgia Bulldog defensive unit. Well, rushing defense, the Georgia Bulldogs are number two in the SEC. Uh, total defense, they're number four. Of course, the Gators are number one in total defense, but Georgia has done a nice job stopping that running game, and the running game has been uh, a weakness of the University of Florida in relation to their ability to pass the ball to any extent. No score, 7.55 to play in the first quarter. End zone shot of Kerwin Bell, second and nine at the 39-yard line of Georgia, and Bell is looking, and now it throws back to Neil Anderson. Anderson across the 35 in Inside the 30-yard line and down to the 28-yard line before he's brought down. Tony Flack, the senior cornerman, brings him down for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, anytime you got a strong passing attack, the defense is going to be vulnerable to that screen pass. Neil Anderson out in the flat. You can see that he has 
plenty of running room. John Little, the rover, who's one of the Bulldogs' better players, misses the tackle, and Neil Anderson picks up the first down. Now, you can see by Florida's game plan that the screen is going to be a big play in today's ball game. That was an 11-yard carry, and here we're looking at the football on the 28-yard line right now as Kerwin Bell looks. He's being pressed, gets away from one man. He throws to Anderson again inside the 20 and out of bounds on the near side at the 17-yard line. Gary Moss. The junior cornerman runs him out, but there was a flag on the play. I think the dogs might have jumped off sides right there. Uh, it looked like they threw the flag early during the play. Yes, they did. Uh, Kerwin Bell, I think, saw that. He had the poise to go ahead with the play, knowing that Georgia had already jumped off sides, and he found his uh, back, Neil Anderson, out in the flat. Uh, 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 Play by Kerwin Bell, knowing that the penalty was going to be called. Obviously declined, and the football has advanced now to the 17-yard line, so it'll be first down for the Gators at the 17-yard line of Georgia as Florida is threatening early on in the football game. Seven minutes and 14 seconds to play in the first quarter. We look at Galen Hall, and uh, that was an 11-yard pickup for the Gators. And here they come now, once again with the eye. John L. Williams, Palatka, Florida, would be the up-back, number 22. Motion man, Frankie Neal from Okeechobee. And here is Bell. The give-off goes to Neal Anderson, trying to turn outside, and is caught after a one-yard gain, or rather, after a loss on that play at the 21-yard line. John Little gets him. He is a junior from Lynn Haven, Florida, the rover back for Georgia. That was a brilliant play by the rover, John Little, who uh, played for... Gunnar Paulson, who's an assistant now at the University of Florida, when Gunnar Paulson was coaching uh, high school at uh, Rutherford, I believe it was, where John Little played quarterback, and he just made a great play for the Bulldogs on, on that stand. Vince Dooley, head coach, University of Georgia, went to Auburn, graduated from there in 54, second and 14 for the Gators on the 21. As Bell looks, he's being blitzed and really chased and gets it off high, and it is incomplete. Bounced around, it was like bouncing ball and Neil Anderson was out there deep the right end Greg Waters and the defensive tackle Henry Williams really put the pressure on Kerwin Bell yeah again the Gators having problems up front picking up those loops and twists and Kerwin Bell was running for his life right there in this particular series the Gators have used those three wideouts uh, that's a formation we haven't seen that much uh, early in ball games to this date Third and 14 at the 21-yard line for the University of Florida Gators, threatening on Georgia. And here is Ray McDonald in motion number nine as Kerwin Bell looks to throw, being blitzed by Georgia, dumps a quick one out there to John L. Williams. He's still on his feet. He's across the 15-yard line, out of bounds. And that is down inside the 15 at about the 14-yard line where he went out, unless they may say that he stepped out at the 16. Tony Mangrum, the right corner man, was the guy that drove him out of bounds. Well, Georgia's got to feel good about this stand. Florida took the ball on Georgia's 40-yard line and only penetrated to about the 16-yard uh, line where we're going to see the field goal attempt. So Georgia did a nice job stopping that potent Gator offense. Dawson. Jeff Dawson, and it will come from the 23, so it'll be a 33-yard attempt. On fourth and nine from the 16-yard line, his foot is into it, it's in the air, touchdown and then they wound up denying them uh, any points at all with the missed field goal attempt. Tate and McCluskey will be the running backs for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs and uh, Jackson remains in at quarterback. It's first and ten at the 20 yard line and Jackson hangs on to the football, turns up the was brought down at the 24 yard line hit and hit hard. And that was Adrian White, the junior from Orange Park who made that hit. Your free safety, Adrian White, is probably one of the fiercest hitters in that Gator defense. Watch him unload right here on Jackson. Nice tackle by Adrian White, but you don't want your safeties making too many tackles in that secondary because that means the, the Bulldogs are penetrating that line of scrimmage with their running attack. Second and six at the 24-yard line for the Bulldogs of Georgia.
by Henderson. He had plenty of speed once he got through that line of scrimmage to carry it all the way. And there is the kick, and it is good. And the score, Georgia 7, Florida nothing. We'll be right back after this. Crumley getting ready to kick off. Steve Crumley, the kickoff man for the Georgia Bulldogs. They've just scored. A 76-yard run puts them up by a score of 7 to nothing, And the ball rolls into and out of the end zone as Ricky Nateel lets it roll by. Let us go now to the sideline for John Nugent and this update report. Jim, you guys talked about what a heated rivalry this is. The ground here at the Gator Bowl is literally shaking. Georgia definitely has the momentum right now. The Gators looking to come back. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Two plays, 80 yards. yard run did it and Crumley's kick was good the longest run from scrimmage for the Bulldogs this year that 76 yard run you could have run a tank through the middle of that uh, defense at that point and he had the speed to carry it 76 yards first and 10 at the 20 yard line now for the Gators Kerwin Bell at the quarterback slot sends Ray McDonald uh, up to the top of the screen gives off to Neil Anderson who cuts back across the 20 to the 22 yard line before he is brought down by Georgia and the Bulldogs make the hit on him at the 22. Let's Once, take a look at the touchdown run again. Once Keith Henderson gets through that uh, interior line, there's no one there. The safeties were up near the line of scrimmage. There's three Gators given valiant pursuit. Jarvis Williams, Curtis Stacy almost trips him up, but Keith Henderson has tremendous ability to stumble on into the end zone. Uh, just a brilliant run by the young freshman. Look at that rushing stat. Georgia 106, Florida 1, although you got to count the 76 yards as part of Georgia's, but boy, I'll tell you, they really lead big. Bell unloads, he's got McDonald near the midfield strike. The senior receiver from Bell Blade, a first down. 16 catches this year for 300 yards, averages 18.8 every time he catches the football. Two touchdowns last week against Auburn. Now the Gators are going to Ray McDonald in the flat you see Henry Harris putting on pressure again from his nose guard position but Ray McDonald has found a gap in the zone a big first down for the Gators to answer that to answer that uh, challenge that the Bulldogs gave him with their quick touchdown first and 10 at the 49 yard line now for the University of Florida as Bell looks to throw and throws a quick one out there but uh, Neil Anderson slipped down right there. It looks like the ball was thrown well, but when Neil slipped down, John Brantley made the interception. Ball at the 41-yard line. It's first and 10 now for the Bulldogs. As Jackson, their quarterback, gives off on the ride to the fullback, and that would be Henderson. Keith Williams brings him down. Or rather, check that, David McCluskey with the carry. Keith Williams, the tackler. Second down eight at M the 43. McCluskey alternates with Keith Henderson, the young man that just sprinted for that touchdown. So David McCluskey's in the ball game right now. Again, we mentioned Georgia has a stable of fine young running backs. They do. Slot offense now for the Bulldogs. Jackson out in the corner. He's got his man complete. Driven out of bounds on the near sideline, near the 50-yard line. And uh, catching the football was Cassius Osborne for the University of Georgia. He's a uh, sophomore split in. Adrian White makes the tackle for the University of Florida. The carry was to the 49-yard line, and Georgia still on their side of the 50. In terms of momentum now, this is a big third down right here. If the Gator defense can uh, get their respect back, so to speak, and stop the Bulldogs right now, it'll be a big play. Third and two as the dogs go with the eye. Jackson trying to turn up field and gets across the midfield strike. Looks like he's got the first down into Florida territory. Arthur White, a sophomore from Crossbrook, makes the hit for the and University of Jackson Florida. On the keeper, near the 48. Somebody down on the field. It's an official. It looks like he got piled up or tangled uh, and might have hurt his ankle out there. You don't see that very often, do you? No, fortunately, you don't. 
be right back with more with the score, Georgia 7, Florida Neption, John Brantley, number 42, from Wildwood, Florida. And that was my question, too. Is he related to John and Scott, who played for Florida? The answer, no. First and 10 at the 48-yard line of Florida for the Georgia Bulldogs, passing Florida 69 yards, Georgia 6. And that's going to be the situation all afternoon. The Gators' strength is passing Georgia's running. Uh, James Jackson just picked up that first down with his running ability on that option. He was able to slide through what hole was available to him at the tackle position and picked up that first down. Jim and I will be picking our selection of the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game in the fourth quarter. Right now, it's the first quarter. Three minutes, two seconds to play in the first period, and uh, the ball on the 48-yard line of Florida. Georgia is in possession of the football and the 7 to nothing lead. Florida has beaten four SEC opponents in a row. LSU, Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Auburn. Galen Hall, unbeaten. And three of those four teams had very strong rushing attacks. Tennessee was the passing team. So the Gators have seen strong rushing attacks before. Here we go with the I formation now. Georgia on first and ten. Motion man to the bottom of the screen. The give off now goes to McCluskey. And McCluskey off the left side. Stacked up hard. Alonzo Johnson gets him there. The All-American from Springfield, Florida. Outside linebacker. One yard on the play. Second down, nine. Here's the ball carrier, and the, here's the replay. At the top of your screen, Alonzo Johnson doing another fine job stuffing his blocker and making the tackle himself. Alonzo just gets better and better every Saturday afternoon we see him play. The carry was to the 47-yard line. It was a tough one-yard gain for Georgia. Second down and nine. Two minutes and ten seconds to play first quarter. And there's a timeout being called on the field by the University I'm of out. Georgia. Georgia. Looks like there was some confusion in the huddle as to what they wanted to do offensively right there, so the dogs called timeout to come over and talk with Vince Dooley. Now you see the defensive captains for the University of Florida go over and talk to the defensive uh, coaches along the sideline. Johnson is one of 12 finalists for the Lombardi Lineman of the Year Award, and deservedly so. And he was talking to Ty Smith, who's the outside linebacker coach Ty Smith done a, done a great job coaching those Gator linebackers. He's also one of 15 finalists for the Butkus Award honoring the nation's top linebacker. And you know, you could win a 1986 Ford Ranger. The Sonny's Fight and Gator truck just registered any participating Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue Florida location. You could also win a Suzuki motorbike, a Columbia bicycle, or a Toshiba jam box. So, go by Sonny's today. Sunnies. They catered at the uh, press box today. Yeah, I can do some damage on barbecue. You certainly can. You're, you've got about 900 in the knife and fork league. <laughs> always have, always will. Second and nine at the 47-yard line for the Georgia Bulldogs. James Jackson remaining in it. The quarterback slot. And Jackson looking to throw. Being pressed by Florida. Being chased as he tries to come to the near side. And is brought down by Alonzo Johnson at the 49-yard line, a loss of two. And we need to mention Jarvis Williams. You see number 26 right there. Jarvis Williams drops back into coverage. There you see Alonzo Johnson on the rush. He gets knocked down temporarily. Big Keith Williams, Jeff Roth in pursuit. Now Jarvis Williams comes up at the bottom of your screen and forces James Jackson back inside. You see that? So his teammates can make the tackle. That was a great play by Jarvis Williams. That's good coaching. Third and 11 at the 49-yard line. And now here is Jackson rolling again, looking for somebody and being pissed and brought down way behind the line. Sacked at the 42 by Jeff Roth, the big freshman from 7-0 Florida. Fourth quarterback sack for this young man. All right, Georgia tries to go to that screen pass, the uh, same type of play the Gators have had some success with. Jackson sprints to the right. He wants to throw back to the left. He wants to come back to Lars Tate, but all of a sudden that Gator pursuit is on top of him, and he's down for the count. Chris Carpenter, the punter, averaging a little over 40. Here's Ricky Natil, the return man. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter, and Georgia leading by a score of 7 to nothing as Carpenter gets his boot off way high, and Natil calls for the fair catch and will take it down at the 10-yard line. So the Gators get the football at the 10. It'll be first and 10 for Florida. As Carpenter comes off, he's done an excellent job hanging that high, exactly what he's supposed to do. Uh, 
There's one word for that punt, brilliant. Uh, Ricky Natil did a fine job fielding that thing. That was a mile high at least, and uh, Carpenter really drilled it down the field. Ricky Natil doing a nice job uh, keeping catching the ball on the 10-yard line, or the dogs could have downed it inside that 10. 47-yard boot as we look at Galen Hall. First and 10 at the 10 for Florida. And here is Kerwin Bell. Anderson and Williams, rural delivery, the setbacks behind Kerwin. Man in motion to the bottom of the screen. The give off is going to go to John L. Williams, and he goes to the 15-yard line before he is brought down. Bring him down, Henry Harris, the left guard, a junior from Decatur, Georgia. Makes the hit for the dogs. Well, the dogs have the Gators uh, deep in their own territory. They can maintain that momentum right now if they can force the Gators to come up with a punt. Conversely, the Gators need to get that momentum back, and they need to establish a couple of first downs right now. Second and five at the 15-yard line. Seconds ticking away here in the first quarter as Kerwin Bell sends Rodney Jones over to the left, and with five seconds to play in the first quarter, they call for the University of Florida. It looked like a signal mix-up there and a little bit of confusion, and Bell wisely calls the timeout. I think there was more than a little confusion. Rodney Jones uh, wasn't sure which way to go, and Kerwin wasn't sure how much time was on the clock. The quarter was going to end in six seconds, and then the, the play would have never gotten started anyway, but he went ahead and called a timeout here uh, just before the first quarter ticks to a close. John Nugent is standing by, and he has an injury report for us on the official. about that. Thanks very much, John. Five seconds to play in the first quarter. Second and five the situation. The ball at the 15-yard line. Georgia up on Florida. Seven and nothing at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville as Kerwin Bell, a sophomore quarterback from Day, Florida, who has led these Gators to two great seasons, comes to the huddle and calls the play. He will send Frankie Neal, 21, to the left. Rodney Jones, 87, would be in the slot to the right, and uh, Williams and Anderson would be the setbacks in the eye, and the give-off goes to Neil Anderson, and he goes to about the 18-yard line for a three-yard pickup before he's brought down Henry Harris, the left interior guard for the University of Georgia, making the tackle. That is the end of the first quarter. Georgia 7, Florida nothing. Right back with more after this. Georgia and Florida entering the second quarter right now. Georgia leads seven to nothing. Third down and two at the 18-yard line for Florida as we look at Vince Dooley, the dean of coaches in the Southeastern Conference. Kerwin Bell with a split backfield. They go with a pro offense. Bell looks at the uh, Georgia Dog defense. Rodney Jones, the motion man, and the give-off goes to John L. Williams, and he is hit and hit hard, scrambling forward. Let's see whether or not he got that first down. He was fighting all the way. He was dead in his tracks in the backfield, but John L. did a 360, did not give up, refused to give up, and spins for the first down. Watch him get hit, I believe, by the rover back. Right there in the backfield, but he's going to spin away. That was number 86. Calvin Ruff had a shot at him, but John L. refused to go down, and uh, perhaps a late hit on the play. It wasn't called, but uh, the dogs need to be careful. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. And here are the first quarter stats. Georgia dominating in rushing. Florida dominating in passing. Georgia in total offense and with the 7-0 lead. And Kerwin Bell now with his team. And he is looking at the Georgia D as he sends Jones to the bottom of the screen. And the give off on the delay ball goes to his fullback. And there was a bobble on the play, but it looks like it was recovered by Florida. Henry Harris, the nose guard, doing a great job for the Georgia Bulldogs. He was in the backfield very quickly right there, uh, sniffed out that draw play that uh, Kerwin Bell's going to try and sneak the ball to John L. It looked like there was a blocking assignment uh, breakdown in the offensive line. Uh, Henry Harris was untouched. So he flew right through there, and now the ball is back on the 13. It'll be second down and 17 yards to go for the Florida Gators. a flag on the play right at the 10-yard line. So let's, let's see what that call is for. Aaron Chubb.
Chubb got his arms up right there. Aaron Chubb, 6'4", 211, freshman, got up in the air and knocked Kerwin's pass to the ground. Looks like perhaps a penalty on the Gators. Legal motion. So the illegal motion call made by the official on the field is going to go against the University of Florida. Probably declined. And it is declined. So we're just into the second quarter. 13 minutes and 48 seconds to play in the second period. It's third down, and the ball is back at the 13-yard line, 17 yards to go. Yeah, that's a tough situation to make up on third down. Let's watch those guys in the silver britches right here and see what kind of a blitz or extra pressure they try and put on Kerwin in an obvious passing situation. Well, I'm sure they're going to be sending everybody but the water boy at Kerwin, and he knows it, and he's looking at that Georgia D as Neil Anderson goes in motion, and Kerwin drops the throw. He unloads way, way long for Ray McDonald, and let's see, it is incomplete. Almost intercepted by the Georgia Bulldogs. Tony Black back there deep, and Tony Mangrum back there for Georgia. Goes is incomplete, so that brings on Ray Criswell, who will kick the football away. Criswell, one punt this afternoon for 38 yards, and now we're looking at John Little, the return man for the Georgia Bulldogs. Fourth and 17, ball on the 13, and Criswell standing back behind the goal and gets the boot off, and it is high and long and will be taken by Little at the 40. He comes cross field and he's to the 47 yard line before he's brought down. But that gives Georgia excellent field position. Well again, Ray Criswell doing a super job from Orange Park, uh, which is a suburb of Jacksonville right here. Criswell getting that punt out, giving that Gator defense a little bit of a break. Georgia having to start on about their own 47 yard line, but just a great punt by Ray Criswell. 48 yarder, eight yard return. Credit Walter Bird with the tackle. And here come the dogs with James Jackson, who's gone all the way at quarterback, calling the signals. First and 10 at the 47 yard line. As the dogs look at the Florida Gators, and the fifth back goes to Tim Worthy it off the left side, gets about two yards on the plate. Scott Armstrong and Henry Brown bring him down. The winning attitude starts with individual performance combined with a strong team morale. Mid-State Federal Savings and Loan admires the spirit and is proud to be the exclusive sponsor of the Most Valuable Player of the Game Award, which will be announced at the conclusion of today's game. Mid-State Federal, Florida's full-service financial planning center. Second and eight at the 49-yard line now for the dog. 12 minutes, 55 seconds to play in the first half, and Georgia leading 7-0 on Florida. Gator defense digs in. The pitch is going to go to Worthy once again. Left side, he's across the 40, and down to the 35-34 yard line before he's brought down by Curtis Stacy. For the Gators, Ron Moten also helping on that tackle for the University of Florida. Troy Sadowski does a nice job out here blocking. Turning Ron Moten, Ron Moten outside, and Tim Worley, the big, strong freshman, is able to sprint through that wide open hole. 17 yards, the carry. First down at the 35. Florida's defense third in the SEC coming into this football game. I formation. Again, the pitch goes to Worthy, trying to turn outside, and Bulldog down at the 32 by Stacy, a sophomore from Bronson, Florida. So a nice play by Stacy. Right, Curtis almost got caught inside, allowing Worley outside, but he had the speed and ambition to make that distance up in a hurry and just Bulldog big Tim Worley. You know, the Gators got two strong senior running backs. Georgia sh is showing us today two strong freshman running backs, Tim Worley and big Keith Henderson, who early, earlier sprinted for that long touchdown. Galen Hall talking with Phil Maggio over there, the offensive line coach, second and eight at the 33-yard line, and uh, the give-off goes to Keith Henderson, and Henderson is on his feet at the 15 and the 5, and he's in the end zone for the score. Georgia leading 13 to nothing now. Keith Henderson picks up his second touchdown of the afternoon. Watch the Georgia line come off in a wave. Just a tremendous effort by that Georgia offensive line, allowing Henderson to break through the line of scrimmage. And once he's in the secondary, he's shown us again he's got great. 
the extra point. Straight on kicker, and it is good. Georgia 14, Florida nothing. We'll be right back. Kickoff for Georgia. They have just scored the ball. Balls off the tee. You know, uh, let's that's talk the worst thing that's happened to them this afternoon. They've had luck on their side. I tell you, the Georgia Bulldogs are on a roll right now. They've got more yardage rushing the football than the Gators generally give up in a, in a full ball game. Uh, it's been all Georgia to this point. A lot of momentum, a lot of enthusiasm uh, dominating the line of scrimmage. You have to give those Bulldogs credit. They've just taken charge of this ball game. And you, uh, a test of a champion is can you come back when you're hurt? Can you come back when you're down? Obviously, the Gators are, are hurt right now emotionally. They're, they're uh, discouraged, but they can come back. Four plays, 53 yards, 150 possession time. Keith Henderson's 32-yard run does it. And here's Crumley kicking off high and deep. And it'll be taken by Ricky Natiel. Bobbles the ball and drops down to one knee. And so it will come out to the 20-yard line. And it'll be first and 10 for the Gators. The 15th annual Gator Golf Day will be held Friday, November 15th, the day before the Kentucky game at the University Golf Course. Former Gator greats who've been invited include Andy Bean, Gary Coach, Steve Belnick, in prizes will be awarded. For more information on Gator Golf Day, contact the Gator Booster Office. Boy, some golf talent will be on the links on that day. Rushing, Georgia 146, Florida 3 this afternoon. First and 10 on the 20. Pitch is going to go to John L. Williams. Rips up the middle across the 25 to the 26-yard line before Georgia is able to stack him up. The senior from Palatka, 6 feet, 222 pounds. John L. brought down by Ronnie Hammonds, a cornerback from Greensboro, North Carolina. Second and call it five at the 25-yard line for the Gators now as the Georgia beef digs in up front. John L. Williams and Anthony Williams, the Williams gang in the backfield now for the Florida Gators. John L. gets the call and gets the first down to the 32. A little bit of uh, running room for John L., but a, just a tremendous effort by that young man personally on the previous two runs. Look at John L. Williams refuse to go down, lowers his head and spins and crawls and fights for everything he can get. Uh, Anthony Williams, number 36, is in the ball to help block for John L. at this point. Neil Anderson is resting. Carry to the 32. It's first and 10 now. John L. Four carries for 20 yards this afternoon. Good average. And uh, Kerwin Bell with the eye formation. Ray McDonald, nine, the motion man, bottom of your screen. As Bell pitches the pitch to John L. Turns upfield and still on his feet to the 34-yard line. Flag on that play. Henry Harris brings him down for the Bulldogs. Georgia just continues to win that battle at the line of scrimmage. There was no hole available to John L. right there. Let's see what the flag's about. A hole, and it's going to go against the Gators. So a tough break for Florida here as the call goes against the Gators with 10 minutes and 31 seconds to play in the second period, and Georgia leading by a score of 14 to nothing. Well, the Gators did a nice job coming out in this series and getting a, a quick first down, and now they've uh, shot themselves in the foot right here with a holding penalty, and they're going to be backed up. Back to the 22-yard line. So, Kerwin Bell needs to put the Bell system into effect, second in the SEC. The Georgia defense, as far as the rushing is concerned, allowing only 93 yards per game. We can see they, they still have success today stopping that rush. First and 20 at the 22-yard line for Florida as Bell looks and throws, and he's got Ray McDonald down at the 48. Ray McDonald makes the uh, catch on the post. Tony Flack makes the tackle. Let's look at it again. Well, Kerwin Bell has the time right here. Ray McDonald runs a quick post. Perfect strike is delivered by Kerwin. Ray McDonald reaches out, stretches out, catches that pass. He's not worried about getting hit. First and ten at the 47-yard line as the Gator offense starts to make a move. Jones, 87, the tight end going to the right side. Again, Bell. Bell with a quick one out in the flat, and he's got his back coming out of the backfield. That's Anthony Williams bumped out of bounds on the far side. Anthony Williams goes out of bounds. Uh, that's him, number 36. He's a sophomore from Tampa Plant High School who's seen limited action this year but has played well. 
Whenever John L. Williams has had, had to go to the tailback position, Anthony Williams has done a fine job playing fullback. Gary Moss was the illegal receiver downfield, and that's going to catch the Gators and cost them because it means a uh, loss of down. And here we'll look at it again. Well, when an offensive lineman makes contact with a defensive lineman, you're allowed to push him and shove him and knock him down the field. But once you lose contact, you have to fall to the ground or they'll consider you an illegal receiver. And it looks like it was Rodney Jones who was the tight end, and he's a legal receiver anyway. I don't know what the confusion was there. Anyway, it sets the ball back to the 42. It's second and 15 for the Gators with nine minutes and 50 seconds to play in the first half. Now, what we see is irrelevant. It's what that guy out there with the flag sees. That He's got the flag. Here's Kerwin Bell. Drops the throw. Being pressed. Now he throws. It's a complete pass across the midfield stripe and out of bounds at the 47. Anthony Williams again was the receiver and Steve Boswell, the strong side linebacker, made the tackle for Georgia, but it gets Florida into Georgia territory. And let's go to John Nugent on the sideline. Jim, Gator fans need not worry. Neil Anderson is not hurt. He's on the sideline. This just might be Jalen Hall's way of trying to shake the ball club up right now. Gentlemen. Third and four at the 47 yard line for the Florida Gators. They're in Georgia territory as Kerwin Bell drops. And he is hit as he pulls the football back. Let's see what they rule it. No, they're going to rule it incomplete pass. And George is upset at that. But he was in the motion of passing it. That's a good call. Uh, Greg Waters, who came in on that sack, uh, pressuring, pushing on the outside of Jack Gerzina, uh, registering that sack, is now tied a Georgia school record for sack. take a look at it. Well, if the ball has started forward in any fashion, looks like he got hit and Kerwin tried to release the ball. Uh, that one probably could have gone either way. Criswell boots it high and it's going to be down on the one foot line. Oh my, what a great play by Florida's special teams. And that was Scott Marshall, number 16, who was down there and that's really going to put Georgia in a hole. We keep mentioning that uh, dimension that Ray Criswell gives that Gator defense. He's considered a member of that defensive team, and now you see why. He's helped that defense with field position. Georgia's starting on, it might be the 8-inch line, it looks like. 46 yards. That looked like a guided missile. First and 10 for the Bulldogs, as Florida's D really digs in. The giveoff goes to the fullback, and he is to the 4-yard line before he is stacked up and brought down, and that was David McCullough. Ricky Knight and Arthur White combining for the University of Florida. So they move the football out a little bit between the four and the five. And now Wayne Johnson is in at the quarterback spot for Georgia. That play didn't look too brilliant, but that was an exciting play in terms of what the Georgia Bulldogs were trying to accomplish. They're trying to get some breathing room, and they did a nice job with that run. Second and seven on the four-yard line now for the Bulldogs. And the pitch goes to the trailing back, turns up field at the six-yard line. That is Lars Tate, a sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana, carrying the football. Jeff Roth brings him down. He's the big middle guard for Florida from 7-0 Florida. Florida defense leads the SEC in total D, allowing 273 yards per game. You really do have to go back and give a lot of credit to Jerry Anderson's special teams troops because they really put the pressure on Georgia on this one. That was heads-up play. Third and four on the seven-yard line now is the call, and now there is a whistle on the field, and the officials have called their own timeout. They're working with one less official than normal because we had a, a gentleman that was that was knocked out. A big, big play here for that Gator defense. They need to rise to the occasion. They need to shut these Bulldogs down if they hope to get back in the ball game here in the second quarter. Seven minutes and 45 seconds to play, and Georgia leading. And a long pass by the Bulldogs, and it is incomplete. Wayne Johnson unloads and really aired the football out and threw it way deep, and it was intended for Stanley Blaylock, and Adrian White was the guy that broke it up. All right, Georgia's going for the big hit right here. They needed about four yards.
yards for the first down, but they're going for the home run. And watch Adrian White. He's on the play from the beginning, getting over there to make up, uh, break up that pass completion. And so Chris Carpenter comes on. He's punted once for 47 yards. Longest punt of the day, 47. Ricky Natiel will be the return man. Fourth and four at the seven is the situation, and he will be standing back deep in his own end zone and boots it out of there and gets it off nice and high and deep. And Natiel will take it down at his 40-yard line. Running cross field, turns up at the 50. He's across the 40-yard line, still on his feet, and down to the 20-yard line. A great return by Ricky Natiel. Oh, he was within an eyelash of going into that end zone. Just a tremendous effort by Ricky Natiel. Now he's given his offense some field position. Watch this wall set up. Ricky Natiel's trying to get behind his teammate. Now he's going to make that cut back that you can't teach. That's just all natural ability. He's going to spin away from an attempted tackle and continues to dive down the field. Great field position for the first time for that Gator offense. Well, it was a 54-yard punt, so the punter did his job, but a 30-yard return by Natiel. First and 10 at the 30-yard line for the Florida Gators as Kerwin Bell hands off the football to Neil Anderson off the left side. He stacked up, maybe got a tough yard or so on the carry. Jake Richardson, the right guard, is the guy that uh, was made the hit. Richardson, 6'4", 262 pounds, playing a strong game at uh, defensive tackle for the Georgia Bulldogs. And we mentioned Greg Waters, number 59. He leads that uh, Georgia Bulldog uh, defense in career sacks, or excuse me, sacks for one season with second, 13. Second and nine at the 29-yard line now for Florida as Kerwin Bell looks to throw. And he is hit as he lets the football go. They call it incomplete pass. Georgia's defense is really getting in there. Greg Waters put the hit on him. He is a senior right in for the Bulldogs. Well, they haven't slowed him down yet. Somebody's going to have to get out there and knock him in the face mask if they're going to slow him down at all. Greg Waters just doing a great job. Watch him come from the right side of your screen, working on Jack Rosina. Gets the outside, uses that arm rip. They teach a defensive end. Hits Kerwin before he can release the pass. Third and nine at the 29-yard line now for the Florida Gators. And they go with the uh, pro slot. As Kerwin Bell now looks to throw, and he lets this one go, and it is incomplete. Intended for Neil Anderson. Coming out of the backfield, and ball is incomplete. And Greg Waters... Again, good defensive play gets in there. Eight attempts for Neil Anderson and uh, five yards this afternoon. So having a long day. That means we're going to see Jeff Dawson as the Gators try for the field goal with the score 14 to nothing and six minutes and 39 seconds left to play in the first half. Ray Criswell will hold. Walter Bird will be the snapper. The wind is from the east at eight miles an hour and he is four of six from 40 to 49 yards. And the kick is going to come from the 34-yard line, a 44-yard attempt, and it is no good. No good. So Dawson with the long field goal attempt and misses for the second time this afternoon, and Georgia stays up 14 to nothing. Well, again, a salute to that Georgia defense. Big Greg Waters was responsible for three straight quarterback pressures. And on Kerwin Bell, and uh, the Gators again come up with a goose egg. Once again this season, Gator basketball fans will get a chance to win an 86 Mercury Cougar at Gator basketball games in the prestige Lincoln Mercury Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue Halftime Shootout. The tail's available at all Gator home games as Georgia dumps back and drops back the throw, dumps one out in the flat, and it goes as incomplete, and it was intended for Tim Worthy. The quarterback now is Wayne Johnson. He is a 6'4", 194-pound freshman from Columbus, Georgia. Georgia 14, Florida nothing in the second quarter, six minutes minutes and 30 seconds to play in this first half. So Florida offensively needs to get the football back and make a drive and put some points on the board here in this first half before they go to the dressing room. And the defense can't afford to give up that big play like they have. Florida put, trying to put all the defensive pressure they can on and coming to the near side and carrying the football would be Tim Worley and he has hit and brought down. So now, he goes to the 31-yard line on the carry, and that brings up third down and eight situation. Now, some, someone on that Gator team has to be thinking turnover. I want to come up with a big play right now. Shut this Georgia Bulldog offense down or come up with a turnover. High formation for Georgia. Third and eight at 
the 31 yard line now for the Bulldogs. As Johnson drops back to throw, he's under some pressure from Florida. Alonzo Johnson chasing him on the far side, and Pennington takes him out of bounds on the far side of the field. So that's going to bring up fourth down, and that means that Georgia is going to have to kick away. Chris Carpenter is in there to kick. Right there, it's a salute to that team speed on the Gator defense. James Jackson has a lot of ability, but that team speed that the Gators have on defense, they were able to close down on him, force him out of bounds before he had, a, had uh, the attempt to pick up the first down. Fourth and six at the 33-yard line. He's had two punts this afternoon, averaging 50.5 per kick. 5.42 to play in the first half. Georgia 14, Florida nothing. On fourth down, Georgia kicking away. Carpenter gets it up way high. And Ricky Mateo calls for the fair catch at the 24-yard line. So the Gators take it first and 10 at the 24 as Mateo goes with a fair catch. And it gets tricky up there in the wind, so it's a good catch. Tony Mangrum was right down there for the University of Georgia, the coverage man. But, and there is a flag on the play. They didn't give him enough space. you got to give the uh, punt returner five yards, give him some room to catch the ball. And uh, Georgia didn't do that. and he tries to back up a bunch, but by that time it's too late. That was uh, Rusty Beasley, number 20 for the Bulldogs. So that means that the uh, football goes to the 30-yard line, and Florida has it first and 10 with 5.33 to play in the first half. They trail 14 to nothing. And this half will be over in a hurry if the Gators don't start generating some offense. They need to get down that field, get some points. High formation now as Ray McDonald comes in motion, and the pitch to John L. Williams on the double reverse. It goes to the field, and he is tripped up behind the line at the 22-yard line. Tripped up way behind the line by Paul Giles, a freshman defensive tackle for the Dogs. Now, the Gators trying to come up with that big play, uh, the first down on this series, trying that reverse to the speed merchant, Ricky Natil. But Paul Giles just penetrated too deeply into the backfield and made the, a nice ankle tackle on Ricky Natil. Second and 17 at the 23-yard line. Way back there for the Florida Gators. Slot offense with Ray McDonald, nine in the slot. As Kerwin Bell looks at the Georgia defense. Bell drops, throws, and it's a complete pass to Anthony Williams coming out of the backfield at the 32-yard line. So Anthony Williams, the young sophomore from Tampa Plant, makes the reception. John Brantley, Wildwood, Florida, makes the hit for the Georgia Bulldogs. Good protection up front, and Anthony Williams continues to show us he has those good hands as a pass receiver coming out of the backfield. So the move was to the 34-yard line. It's third down, and all at seven for the Gators now. Split backfield behind Kerwin Bell as he drops the throw. And he gets a quick one out there to John L. Williams. He's across the midfield stripe. He's still on his feet and across the 40 in Georgia territory to the 38-yard line. Elvin Ruff makes the tackle. Here it is again. Well, it, the play begins with a good protection. If you don't have the protection, you don't have a chance. He has the protection. He can take a second look. He finds John L. Williams dragging across the middle. Anytime you have... That extra second, that drag route's going to be open, and John L. just continues to fight and dive as we see him do play after play. First and 10 at the 38-yard line. John L. four catches for 48 yards this afternoon. Less than four minutes to play in the first half. Kerwin Bell looking for somebody open. Throws, and it is complete to the 21-yard line to Frankie Neal. Another first down for the Gators. Tony Flack makes the tackle. Neal at 85, caught nine footballs. Touchdowns, averaging 24.3. Well, coming in, into this ball game, a lot of pressure on that Georgia defense to stop the University of Florida's passing game. Uh, on this series, the Gators are having that success. Frankie Neal runs a simple hook route. Kerwin has the time to deliver the football. First and 10 at the 21-yard line now. Anderson and Williams, rural delivery in the backfield. And it's Neal Anderson getting the call as he carries down 
to the 17-yard line from the 21. Nice block nice. by big Jimmy Davis up front. Uh, youngsters, his 21st birthday to, today. He's from Apopka. Big offensive guard, number 67, Jimmy Davis. Happy birthday, and Henry Williams makes the tackle. Three minutes to play in the first half. Florida on the move, second and five at the 16. Georgia leading by a score of 14 to nothing. All right, a champion has to have that will to win, and right now that needs to come to the forefront for the Gators. Rodney Jones, 87, the motion man for Florida. The give off goes to John L. Williams, brought down at the 20 yard line. John Brantley, the strong side linebacker, blitzed right in, number 42, and made the hit. Just a brilliant play by Brantley, a 6'2", 216 from Wildwood, Florida. Shot through the gap to make the tackle in the backfield. That hurts. Now it's going to be a third and nine, third and nine and a half. At the 20 yard line. And here are the Gators now, trailing in this football game by two touchdowns. Two minutes and 20 seconds to play, first half. Again, the split backfield behind Kerwin Bell. And Kerwin Bell dropping, looking, and he throws, and it is incomplete. Intended for Brett Whitman on a post pattern at the four-yard line. Goes is incomplete, and Tony Black and John Little combined to make the hit, getting some help there, too, from Gary Moss. Kerwin's going to take that second look and go to Brett Wickman, but uh, Tony Flack, the four-year starter, puts a gigantic hit on Wickman. He didn't have a chance to catch that football. Once again, the Gators are attempting their third field goal. From the 27-yard line, a 37-yard attempt. Griswell to hold, Jeff Dawson to attempt, and the snap from Walter Bird. His foot is into it. It's in the air, and it is good. And the score, Georgia 14, Florida on the board with three. We'll be right back after that line of scrimmage. Jeff Dawson's 36-yard field goal put the Gators on the board. Two minutes to play in the first half, and the uh, give-off is going to go to David McCluskey off right David guard McCluskey. to about the 12-yard line yard before line. he's brought down by Pennington Scott Armstrong. For Florida. James Jackson um, Timeout. is in at Florida. the quarterback spot now for the University of Georgia. The Georgia offense averaging almost 300 per game, and we'll be right back after this. Beats got the football racing down the sideline and knocked out of bounds on the near sideline as he crosses the 50-yard line and he goes to the 48-yard line. Carrying the football, Lars Tate, a sophomore from Indianapolis, Indiana. Well, we talked about the tight ends that Auburn had last week. Big Troy Sadowski just knocks people down at the line of scrimmage. And Lars Tate is in the secondary. Jarvis Williams comes completely from the other side of the field to make the tackle. So it's first and 10 on the 48-yard line of Florida for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Wayne Johnson in at the quarterback position right now. And uh, Johnson hangs on on the bootleg and throws out in the flat. But complete, but he is hit and hit hard at the 40. Leon Pennington and Curtis Stacy make the hit on Ronnie Smith, the receiver. Hello, how you doing? Curtis Stacy? my goodness, what a lick. You're talking about uh, courage. Curtis Stacy's not a very big fellow. He hit that big tight end. Face mask to face mask. Ronnie Smith got a long distance call just a moment ago. Wayne Johnson in there at the quarterback spot. It's second and two at the 40. And the give off goes to David McCluskey up the middle. And he carries to about the 36 yard line, 37. But it looks like he's got the first down. Tommy Duhart, sophomore from Belglade, Florida, makes the tackle. Now we see uh, Georgia calling timeouts because now that they've penetrated that 50-yard line, they're thinking field goal uh, at least. They possibly can get a touchdown. They're really dominating the line of scrimmage on the corners, getting that tailback outside, using the big block of the tight end, pulling the guard. Uh, the Gators are going to have a lot of work to do at halftime to stop that powerful running game that we're seeing from Georgia. Now you see the Gator defense just talking to their coaches. Ricky Knight, number 24, first and 10 at the 37-yard line for Georgia. They're in Florida territory with 107 to play in this first period. And Sonny's Real Pit Barbecue has a great offer. You get a free Gator Coca-Cola collector's bottle with the purchase of any barbecue plate and a Coke. Available while supplies last and participating Sonny's Florida locations. Commemorate the 84 Gators with a Coca-Cola collector's bottle at Sonny's Barbecue. First and 10 at the 37 now for the Georgia Bulldogs as the Florida defense digs in. 
four down linemen. Now they go with three down linemen and drop off the two ends as outside linebackers. And dropping back and looking to throw as a quarterback. And he hits his man at the 21-yard line. Brought down right away, catching the football. Fred Lane, number four, brought down by Adrian White. Fred Lane coming into this ball game only has six receptions. But he does a nice job right here as we see on the replay. Wayne Johnson just drills the ball to Fred Lane who does a simple hook. Adrian White, a uh, nice coverage, but uh, well-executed pass ball. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Henderson off the right side to the 16-yard line. Patrick Miller makes the tackle and getting some help there, too, from Leon Pennington that you saw getting up. Number 45. 36, 35 seconds. The clock continues to tick down. Georgia wants to get six or at least three. Second and six at the 16-yard line. Out in the corner and out of bounds. And they say, no, he is out of bounds. Fred Lane, when he caught the football. So that goes as an incomplete pass. And that's going to bring up third down with 26 seconds to play. The ball at the 16-yard line. Georgia's got one timeout left. Third and six at the 16-yard line. Keith Henderson. Pretty good for first carry average. 114 yards for the first half and two touchdowns. Johnson looking to throw, being pressed by Florida, unloads for the end zone, and it is incomplete. Deep in the end zone, Patrick Miller was there. It was intended for Keith Henderson coming out of the backfield. And what a fine afternoon this young guy is having. Alonzo Johnson was the guy who was there for the Florida Gators. Uh, forces the fourth down situation. It looks like the dogs are obviously going to go with the field goal. So that will bring on Steve Crumley, the freshman from Athens, Georgia, who kicks off. And this is his first field goal attempt of the afternoon. He is two for two with extra points. Two of three at this distance from over 30 yards away, and it is good. And so now the Georgia Bulldogs have the lead 17 to three. 15 seconds to play in the first half. Now Georgia has the ball on their own 10-yard line, and they wind up getting a field goal right before the half. That's a tremendous boost to their morale, as if they needed it. I mean, they've been dominating the game. And they come back after the, ga the Gators answered with a field goal, making it 14 to three. Now they come back with a field goal of their own, two touchdown advantage. Well, Florida's behind right now by 14 points. And by the way, that drive 76 yards, took one minute, 49 seconds, a 32 yard field goal, nine plays. And here you see the Florida team talking to their coach. Of course, when you have the passing attack that the Gators have, uh, 14 points, it's not that impossible to overcome. Uh, if the Gators did not have the ability to pass the ball, you'd be a lot more concerned at halftime. But they do have that ability to move the ball in the air. And there's plenty of time in the second half to make some corrections on defense and move the ball offensively as well. All right. So an offsides call is going to make... Looks like they're... No. They're at the 40-yard line. They're going to kick it from the 40. They've laid the football down. And it looks like Florida expects Georgia to squib kick. They want to prevent they a good run back. It's going to be picked up now by Neil Anderson, who comes to the near side. He's across the 20 and across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Ten seconds to play in the first half. And Florida's got the football at the 26. Kerwin Bell, 11 for 20 for 161 yards this afternoon. The Gator Hotline with Galen Hall Radio Call-In Show aired every Wednesday during football season from 7.07 until 8 p.m. on most of the Gator Radio Network stations. Be sure to tune in every Wednesday evening. First and 10 at the 26-yard line now for Florida. 10 seconds to play in the first half. Anderson, the motion man, 27. Kerwin Bell looking to throw, and he's got Frankie Neal open at the 45-yard line, and Neal slips down at the 46-yard line as the clock runs out. That is the end of the first half with the score. Georgia 17 and Florida 3. So I think kind of a surprise to a lot of people as far as that score is concerned. Uh, Georgia thought to be the defensive team more than offensively, and they've scored 17 points. Florida, on the other hand, has put three points 
on the board in the first half. And I think it's a surprise Georgia's had that much success running the football. Uh, the University of Florida stopped an LSU ground attack. Uh, they stopped a, a Miami football team that's uh, in the top 10. Uh, last week at Auburn, they stopped a team getting 360 yards a game. A junior return man number four for the University of Georgia you're looking at. He is averaging a little over 24 yards every time he returns the football. And now this is John David Francis, number five, who is getting ready to move to the football. He is the freshman walk-on, hometown start Florida. Georgia leading Florida by a score of 17 to three as Francis kicks off and it is way high and Lane is gonna take it behind the goal. He's at the five, the 10, across the 15, it's back up at the 16 yard line. And uh, brought down by Joe George. 31, the uh, running back from Lake City, Florida. Georgia's going to start inside their 20 as we see the first half stats. Georgia dominating the rushing game, Florida dominating the running game. Uh, Georgia having an edge in total offense. We did we did expect Georgia to run the ball, but obviously not that successful. Not too bad, many penalties, so a very cleanly played game this afternoon. First and 10 at the 17-yard line for the Bulldogs of the University of Georgia. And the pitch is going to go to the trailing back, and he cuts off the left side of the 22-yard line, and that is Jim Worley, freshman from Lumberton, North Carolina, Leon Pennington, the inside linebacker, and Tommy Duhart combined for the University of Florida to make the tackle. Worley, three carries for 21 yards in the first half. Well, that's a five-yard pickup on the first play of the second half, running the same play they had success with in the first half. So the Gators... motion man as Jackson rolls on play action looking upfield gonna hang on to it himself and turn upfield and goes out of bounds on the far sideline and let's see where they spot him out along the far sideline a good athlete type but not a great thrower his team leading by a score of 17 to 3 as Jackson rolls out when Jackson or Georgia throws the ball it'll be on that sprint out action he does a nice job of Faking out Arthur White there, he's able to get outside of Leon Pennington's pursuit and pick up the first down. Georgia at, gets out of a hole. At the 32, it's first and 10 for the Georgia Bulldogs. We're just into the second half. The Dogs leading 17 to three. And the pitch is gonna go to Tim Worley coming to the near side. Turns Worley. up field for a couple of yards, but there's a flag on the play. Keith Williams, the right tackle for Florida, made the hit. Anytime that umpire throws that flag into the pile, it's generally offensive holding. It looks like uh, Georgia, for one of the first times in this ball game, uh, might have a penalty. Good call. That's exactly what it was. Now they're talking to Florida to see what they want to do. J.D. Henry to West Side Information. J.D. Henry to West Side Information. Leon Pennington discussing with the uh, referee on the field. So they're going to march it off against the Bulldogs and march it back to the 22-yard line. So it'll be first down and 20 for the Dogs at the 22. An excellent opportunity now for that Gator defense to pin their ears back and take control at the line of scrimmage, put some pressure on that dog offense. Uh, Georgia with that penalty, first and 20, is in a real bind right now, deep in their own territory. A lot of uh, opportunity for that Gator defense. Henderson would be the up back of the eye, and Worley would be the tailback. Quarterback James Jackson for the Bulldogs of Georgia at the 22, first and 20. And the giveoff is going to go to Keith Henderson, and Henderson goes to the 23-yard line. Henderson, Roth and Keith 24. Williams combining to make the stop for Florida. Let's go to John Nugent for Galen Hall's halftime comments. Jim, at halftime, Galen Hall said he felt his defense was playing good football except for those three big Georgia plays. He feels in the second half they can throw the ball against the Georgia defense. One thing we need to remember is that Kerwin Bell has not failed us yet when we've been down in the second half. Gentlemen. Thanks, John. Second at 18 from the 24-yard line as the Florida defense gets tough. Beginning of the second half. Motion man to the bottom of your screen. And rolling out is Jackson. He's looking up the oak. Can't find anybody. And dropped at the 20 by Alonzo Johnson. What a play by Alonzo Johnson. He's 
maintaining his position there to turn the quarterback inside. He will not let him get outside, and then he just leaps, leaps forward and makes that tackle. Watch the reactions of Alonzo Johnson. He's fighting off the block. Now he's going to get outside. Watch that extra effort. He just reaches out with one hand. What tremendous strength. He has just tied Wilbur Marshall's University of Florida record for quarterback sacks with 23. That's unofficial career record. Jackson at the quarterback spot for the Georgia Bulldogs. Split backfield now behind Jackson on third and 22 from the 20. And now they're calling for a timeout on the field. And it looks like it's going to be too much time against the University of Georgia. So that's going to send him back even more. Okay, Georgia's making two mistakes right here at the beginning of the second half. Coming out with a holding penalty, now coming out with a delay of game. Uh, what they're doing now, they're allowing that Gator defense to get a little bit more pumped up, get that adrenaline flowing. The Florida Gator fans are now in the game cheering their defense on. It's third and a cab ride, as you call it, Jim Gallagher. From the 15-yard line, 27 yards to go. For the Georgia Bulldogs, as Jackson chants the signals, puts a man in motion, give off on the draw, goes to Henderson across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Patrick Miller makes the tackle. That means Georgia's going to have to kick out of there, and Florida gets a shot at the football again. And a standing O for that Gator defense. The fans know they got to help pump some life back into this University of Florida football team, and they're letting that defense know they appreciate that effort. So Chris Carter, three punts this afternoon, averaging 47.3 per kick. Ricky Nathiel, the return man. Chris Carpenter standing on the six-yard line, number six, and he will boot it away. It goes high. Nathiel calls for the fair catch at the 31-yard line very wisely. A terrible sun in his eyes right there. Anytime you're running from left to right as you're looking at our screen, that sun is right in your eyes, and Ricky Nathiel was really battling that sun. No return on that for Florida. 47-yard punt, and uh, on the fair catch, it gives Florida the football, though, at the 31. And now here comes Mr. Kerwin Bell. First and 10 for the Gators. 11 minutes, 15 seconds to play in the third quarter. Georgia leading Florida 17 to 3. If Kerwin's going to get anything done, he needs help from those big guys up front. Let's see if Georgia has success putting pressure on the Gator quarterback. Anderson dots the eye. Williams is the up back as Kerwin Bell looks at the Georgia split six defense. And Kerwin Bell looks, throws back to Neil Anderson. He's at the 30 to 35. Inside the 40, across the 45, across the territory to the Georgia 45 yard line. Great block by John L. Williams. And Tony Mangrum, Tony Black make the tackle for Georgia. David, David Williams, the big tackle from Lakeland, number 73, is going to get out in the screen. It's a sprint throwback screen. You see Kerwin sprint to the left. Now he puts the brakes on. There's Neil Anderson. They tried this play earlier in the ball game. They're going right back to it. Look at him split and sprint through that uh, hole in the secondary. First and 10 for the Gators now. The pitch goes to Neil Anderson. He gets to the 45-yard line. Tough yard on that as the dogs sniffed that one out. And they were right there to make the stop the right side of the Georgia defensive line combining on that. Let's give Greg Waters credit for the first guy there. Big senior from Swainsboro, Georgia. I think Greg Waters is probably playing better than any defensive player we've seen this season. You're right about that. Number 59 for the Bulldogs. Second and nine at the 45-yard line now for the Gators. Bell 13 for 22 for 200 yards this afternoon. Bell quick one out in the flats. Got Ray McDonald. McDonald fighting still on his feet at the 36-yard line. It's Gary Moss making the hit for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Oh, I tell you, your heart jumps in your throat when you see that pass because the quarterback, if he looks and reads the eyes of the quarterback, he might take a gamble and break on that play, and you can kiss him goodbye, but Ray McDonald was there to make the reception there. Uh, that's just a very dangerous play sometimes Look at that. out to the flat. Look at that statistic. Florida has outscored their opposition 120 points to 59 in the second half. We need to... Uh, Pay recognition to Ray McDonald for being on the cover of Sports Illustrated last week. That's quite a tribute to that young man and to the Gator team as a whole. Georgia has allowed only 56 second-half points this season. Well, Ray is Ray comes from a great family in Belle Glade. His dad is a longtime coach down there, and he was an excellent track man in high school, too. First and 10 at the 36-yard line as 
the Gators pick up the first down. Slot offense. It's McDonald in the slot to the top of your screen. Now he drops in motion to the bottom as Bell looks over the Georgia defense. High formation. Give to John L. Williams, and he fights to the 32-yard line. A four-yard gain. It'll be second and six coming back. Big Henry Harris, number 52, continue to, continuing to play a strong game at the nose guard position. I've got to say that Georgia obviously is so impressive at that line of scrimmage on defense. I think right now, the way they're playing, they're obviously the best defensive unit we've seen this year. They're very aggressive, and they, they have kind of a swarming defense, I guess you could call it. Second down for the Gators. A little over nine minutes to play in the third period. They trail, and Kerwin Bell looks to pass. John Brantley come, but so did that rover back, John Little. And both of them coming from the bottom of your screen. Look at John Little, number 19 and number 42. John Brantley putting pressure on Kerr when he takes a big loss. Now you're looking at third and uh, 16 or 17. From the 43-yard line. And uh, we've got eight minutes and 28 seconds to play in the third period. Kerwin Bell with the pro set. Now he puts Anderson in motion, 27. He's got a lone setback. John L. Williams, Bell slips and brought down way behind the line. Back at the 45-yard line, fumble on the play, recovered by Georgia. So the Georgia Bulldogs get the recovery just as Florida started to move the football. And there again, as you point out, Jim, up front, that Bulldog defensive line is tough. Watch Greg Waters from the bottom of your screen. snap of the center and Kerwin doesn't have a chance they're going to have to do a better job of protecting Kerwin against the rushes of Greg Waters he's just dominating uh, a dominating pass rusher right now first and ten at the 44 yard line now for the Bulldogs of Georgia and at the line for them would be James Jackson at the quarterback spot and Jackson gives off to his halfback and that's Lars Tate on there and Lars Tate brought down by Henry Brown Fort Myers. If you'll reflect back to the LSU game and remember the problems they had keeping Clifford Charlton out, their tackles just couldn't get him blocked. Well, this afternoon, the tide has turned and uh, the Gators are having trouble keeping a defensive pass rusher out. Number 59, Greg Waters. Second and eight from the 46-yard line now for the Georgia Bulldogs. As James Jackson rolls, he's looking to throw. He's going long overhead and it is incomplete. It was way Stanley Blaylock and it falls as incomplete. Vernell Brown was the coverage man for the University of Florida. So here's Galen Hall talking with his assistants along the sidelines. That's Bill Maggio over there that Galen is talking to. That and ball was in the air forever on that particular pass, and that youngster almost ran right under. Seven minutes, 35 seconds to play third quarter. Third down, eight yards to go. Ball at the 46. Georgia in possession. Jackson win for two for six yards this afternoon. High formation for the Bulldogs. The give off goes to David McCluskey, the up back, and he fights to about the 49 before Florida takes him down. Well, the Gator defense is doing the job. They're shutting down that uh, Georgia offense, giving the Gator offense the ball back. Chris Carpenter gets another shot to kick it away. Averaging 47.5 yards per boot this afternoon on four kicks. Done an excellent job at that position for the Bulldogs. As he stands at the 35. It's fourth and five at the 49. And the kick's going to come from about the 40. He gets it way high. It's wobbly. And they say let it come down. And it rolls inside the 10-yard line at the nine. And so Florida takes over the football now. First and ten the nine-yard line, and Bill O'Leary, number 33, comes down to down it for the Georgia Bulldogs special teams. He got a little anxious. Actually, the ball was going to continue to roll near that Gator goal line, but he got a little anxious and jumped on it at the nine, or the Gators would have been in more trouble. That was a 47-yard punt, of course, no return. By the way, late in the fourth quarter, Jim and I will pick the Mid-State Federal Player of the Game. At the end of the season, a scholarship will be awarded to the University in honor of the Mid-State Federal Player of the year. Six minutes, 48.
48 seconds to play third period. Georgia 17, Florida 3. The Gators have the football, first and 10. Ball spotted down at the 10-yard line. Frank McCarthy up over the football. Bell's give off is going to go to his up back, John L. Williams. Williams up the middle, slight gain. Greg Waters makes the hit for Georgia. Well, if you can't pick up any yardage running the ball, all you do is put more pressure on your passing game because Georgia will tee off on obvious passing situations. The Gators need to have some respectable uh, running attempts here in the second half to take some pressure off their passing game. Second and eight at the 12-yard line. And here come the Gators. Out of the huddle. Bell with the eye formation. John L. Williams is the up back. Neil Anderson at the top of the eye. Bell looking to throw, and he unloads, and he's got Breck Quickman at the 30-yard line. A first down for the Gators. Junior from Gainesville. Gary Moss makes the hit. He's caught nine and balls this year coming into the game for 108 yards. And let's take a look at it again. Well, I hate to sound like a broken record, but if you give the guy time, he can do this to you. And he's going to find Brett Whitman, the senior who has the, the good hands near the sideline. Brett catches the ball, steps out of bounds, the clock stops at 6 5 here in the third quarter. Well, George is so aggressive. If you were looking there, uh, you saw that he still got hit hard after he delivered the ball. First and 10 at the 30-yard line now for the Gators. Rodney Jones, 87 in motion. And here is Bell out to John L. Williams. He's across the 35 and to the 38-yard line before he's brought down by Calvin Ruff. The left end defensively for Georgia. That's a great name for a football player, isn't it? Calvin Ruff. John L. Williams with a carry. It'll be second and two at the 38 for the Gators coming back. Rodney Brewer with the baseball cap, number 19, standing next to Galen Hall, head football coach. John L. Williams, five catches for 56 yards this afternoon. On second and two, the call to Neil Anderson, who tries to turn outside and is brought down behind the line at the 37. Again, Cal making the hit. Calvin Ruff and Bill Mitchell, number 56, is leading the Bulldogs in tackles for the year. Uh, 6'1", 219, senior from Dalton, Georgia, doing a nice job. Puts the Gators in a third and tough situation, third and three or four, and with the lack of success running the ball, you got to believe they're going to go to the pass. Third and three at the 37-yard line. Here they come now with a slot, and the slot would be to the right of Kerwin Bell, the quarterback, look at the field level shot and Bell is dropping to throw and he's looking for somebody throws and he's got his tight end for a first down to the 43 yard line of Georgia Rodney Jones a big junior from Tampa catches the football the weak side linebacker Bill Mitchell senior from Dalton Georgia makes the hit on Rodney this is such an impressive play by Kerwin Jones with literally the flick of a wrist watch him watch excuse me Kerwin Bell watch him stand back here in the pocket. Now watch him just flick his wrist and find Rodney Jones down the field, the, the tight end from Plant High School. A nice catch by Rodney. Probably, I believe that's only his second catch of the year. Credit Earl Hyatt with a nice block on that last play. First and 10 at the 44-yard line now for the Florida Gators as Kerwin Bell again gets the time, and he's looking, and he's got Rodney again. Cannot hang on to the football and bounces out incomplete. He was right there at about the 38-yard line. That would have been a six or seven yard gain, put the Gators in decent uh, position to attempt to roll up another first down. You got to catch that ball when it gets to you, and Rodney just took his eyes off of it for a second. Well, Neil Anderson checks out, and Anthony Williams checks in, so we got the Williams gang in the backfield, Anthony and John L. for the University of Florida. Second and 10 at the 44 yard line now for the Florida Gators driving on Georgia. They're in Georgia territory. Kerwin Bell with the eye. Anthony Williams is the up back. The pitch to John L. Williams trying to turn outside. Brought down after a short gain at about the 42 yard line. Between the 42 and the 43. Well, we talk about that speed on the Gator defense. The Georgia defense really does swarm to that football. Uh, John L. perhaps had a little bit more of an opening inside, but he chose to go outside. And they were doing a tap dance on his head out there before he knew what was happening. Bill Mitchell made the hit. Weak side linebacker, senior for the University of Georgia. Three minutes and 40 seconds to play. Third period, third down, nine at the 43. Georgia leading Florida, 17 to three. The Gators have the football. They're driving on Georgia. Split backfield with a slot offense as Kerwin.
Irwin Bell again looks to throw. He's under pressure, brought down way back at the 47-yard line on the Florida side of the 50 by Greg Waters. Greg Waters from Swainsboro, Georgia, has been a thorn in the side of the Gators all afternoon. I think he's been more like a spear instead of a thorn. They're going to have to either go with two tight ends or leave a back in the in to protect and help that weak side tackle. They're just not able to get him blocked one-on-one, -on -one, so they're going to have to help him out with either changing the formation or leaving a back in. Criswell kicks deep. It's going to go high, and a fair catch call for it, but it goes into the end zone, so it'll come out to the 20-yard line. That was John Little, 19, who was deep and made the call. Criswell boots it in there. No return. It'll be first and 10 at the 20 for the Bulldogs of Georgia with 2.50 to play in the third period. Sunny's Fighting Gator Truck. All you have to do is fill out the entry form available at participating Sunny's Real Pit Barbecue locations. No purchase necessary. Contest ends December 1st. This customized orange and blue 1986 Ford Ranger could be yours. You know, those quarterback sacks not only stop the Gator offense, but they continue to give the Georgia Bulldogs enthusiasm, and that's a tough situation to overcome. James Jackson, the quarterback, carries the football himself to the 22. It's first and 10 at the 20. Arthur White, the sophomore inside linebacker from Cross Group, the hit man for the University of Florida. You know, there's a difference between stopping the opponent and then stopping him by throwing the star quarterback on the ground. What I'm talking about is that continues to give the Georgia Bulldogs uh, a lot of enthusiasm on their bench, and when their offense goes on the field, they're all pumped up as well. Second and seven at the 23-yard line. And the pitch is going to go to the trailing back. That would be Tim Worley. And Worley is stacked up right as he tries to turn up field by Curtis Stacy. Sophomore left corner man, Bronson Clark. Ball is just over the 30-yard line. First down. For the Two Bulldogs. minutes and nine seconds to play in the third period. The Bulldogs of Georgia lead 17-3. That was enough for the first down. So Georgia hangs on to the football and moves forward. And they've got the football on the 30. A slot offense. Slot would be to the left side. As their quarterback James Jackson hands off, and the handoff goes to Keith Henderson. Henderson with a carry. Alonzo Johnson with the stop. And so the ball brought to the 37-yard line by the University of Georgia. They're still on their side of the midfield strike. Vince Dooley says his center, Peter Anderson, is as good or better than any of the 13 All-Americans he's ever played in that offensive line. And you can see that center of the Bulldog line working effectively out there this evening. Second and four at the 36. Anderson rips up field for a first down and a good game across the 50. The freshman running back who scored Georgia's two touchdowns this afternoon. And look at that hole. You see the guard hit the inside linebacker, Leon Pennington, and once he's taken care of, you're in the secondary. They lock down on the nose, nose guard, hit that inside line, linebacker face mask to face mask, and then you're in the secondary. For a big guy, he's got some great moves, too. First and 10 at the 50 for Georgia. The pitch is again going to go to Tim Worley, and Worley on the right side goes to about the 47-yard line Tim before Worley. he's brought down by Florida's Duhart. Tommy Duhart. Duhart. And 10 at the or rather the carry was to the 47 yard line so it'll be second and seven at the 47 38 37 36 seconds left in this third quarter seconds tick away and georgia sitting up on that 17 to 3 lead georgia's keeping possession keith henderson again gets the call as he goes to the 42 yard line but there was a flag on the play Henry Brown made the tackle to the University of Florida. A hold, and it's going to go against Georgia. So that's going to set the Bulldogs back a ways. 21 seconds to play in the third period, and Georgia leading 17 to 3. Well, that's a fortunate penalty for the Gator defense. Uh, Georgia was getting some momentum right there. They were rolling off that line of scrimmage, starting to put first down after first down together. The penalty's going to put them back a little bit. And they're not comfortable passing that football, and they might be forced to here. Second and 17 now with the ball back at the 43-yard line after the hold call against 
against the Georgia Bulldogs. 21 seconds to play, third period. The red, white, and black clad Georgia Bulldogs in their high-tech silver britches, as they call them in Georgia. Now the Gators are looking for a spark on defense now. Right now, they're thinking maybe we can come up with a turnover. And uh, the seconds are just dropping off. And Georgia is letting them drop away. The score, Georgia 17 and Florida 3 at the end of the third quarter. I can smile again. We're back at the Gator Bowl in Jacksonville. Georgia leading guard is 17 to 3. Second down five. Ball at the 49-yard line. Six minutes, four seconds to play. Kerwin Bell with the eye formation. Bell drops the throw and dumps a quick one out to Neil Anderson. Anderson across the 40 and to the 35-yard line. So Neil Anderson gets the first down on the reception. Offensive linemen need to be careful not to get downfield too soon on those screen passes. Uh, they're going to throw the penalty. Watch the screen to the left. Kerwin drops straight back. He's going to dump off to Neil Anderson in the flat. You see McCarthy getting downfield. They need to be careful about that. It was a well-designed screen, however, picking up the first down. At the 36, first and 10 for the Gators. Off the eye, it's Kerwin Bell. Kerwin Bell is looking now, and he's got Neil Anderson again inside the 30 at the 28-yard line. Brought down by Greg Waters. Now, what's Greg Waters doing back there? You're, you're almost uh, watching him rush on every play, and all of a sudden he drops back and is in on the pass protection, making the tackle on uh, the running back. Second and two at the 28-yard line as Galen Hall works on his fingernails. 17-3 to three as the Gators on Georgia at the 28-yard line. The give goes to Neil Anderson. Anderson on his feet, fighting forward for every inch as he gets down to the six-yard line. What a gutty carry by Neil Anderson. Gary Moss drags him down. Five minutes and four seconds, stops the clock, first down. He was with an arm tackle getting in that end zone. A gutty performance by Neil, Neil Anderson. Anderson on the pitch to the tailback. Jeff Zimmerman, Jimmy Davis doing a nice job. He breaks three tackles right here, makes a great cutback, and almost breaks it all the way. First and goal at the seven. Anthony Williams checks in for Neil Anderson as the up back. The pitch goes to John L. Williams. Fumble on the play. Let's see who recovered. Georgia recovers the fumble. So Florida had moved the football inside the 10 yard line and we're threatening on Georgia, and Georgia recovered the fumble, and Henry Williams is the recovery man. had the ball for some reason the exchange wasn't there on the pitch and he he never had possession of the ball at all so the dogs with four minutes and 47 seconds left to play a 17 to 3 lead have the football back total offense this afternoon for georgia 308 yards for florida 350 but the story is georgia 17 florida 3 with 447 to play the give off goes to keith henderson comes up the middle to the 11-yard line across the 10. And uh, Georgia brought down by Patrick Miller, the outside linebacker. Two-yard gain for the Dogs. It'll be second down and eight on the 10. 421 
to go. That Gator defense needs to get the ball back some way. Chanting the signals is James Jackson, and he pitches, and the pitch goes to the near side. Fox 
stops with 254. And here is Bell. Again, the slot. Kerwin Bell to throw. He gets Neil Anderson, and Neil Anderson gets to the 40. He's going to be very close to another first down as the Gators are really putting together a good drive. And Kerwin Bell's having problems getting off the turf. He's been hit so often this afternoon. He's really showing a red badge of courage out there, continuing to line up uh, behind that center. He's taking a pounding on every play. Yet another first down and 10 at the 40-yard line of Georgia for the Gators. Kerwin Bell rolling and looking and uh, dropping back. And there's a flag on the play and whistles on the play. So let's see what the call is from the field. Been a tough afternoon for the Gators. Coming in here at 7-0-1, ranked number one in the nation. Illegal procedure, and it's against the Florida Gators. So that's going to set them back five. 2.33 on the clock. And they're trying to work against that clock right now. Next week, George has a big game against the Auburn uh, War Eagles. And in, Florida in will be at Florida Field to take on another SEC rival, the Wildcats of Kentucky. First and 15 at the 45-yard line for the Gators, Kerwin Bell. A quick one out in the flat, and he's got his back coming out of the backfield, Anthony Williams, and Anthony Williams still on his feet as he crosses the 35 to the 33-yard line. He's a young sophomore out of Tampa's Plant High School. Gary Moss makes the tackle. The clock continues to run, and we're down to 2.05 right now as it keeps ticking. And Kerwin Bell with a pro set. Again, Bell, and this time he's got John L. Williams to the 25-yard line for another first down, stopping the clock. Bell has really worked the clock well. Steve Boswell, the junior linebacker, makes the hit for Georgia. Now the Gators know there's a minute 56 seconds left on the clock, and uh, they the Gators want to get that time out. We'll be right back. for the Gators, 156 to play. And the Mid-State Federal player of the game, Kerwin Bell, has had almost 400 yards through the air so far this afternoon. Drops back to throw and does, and he's got Ricky Natiel incomplete inside the five. Good coverage in the secondary by the Bulldogs to just tip that ball away from Ricky just as he was trying to reach out and grab it. Gary Moss, the right corner man. Kerwin, 394 yards this afternoon. 31 of 47. That pass was on target. It was just good coverage. Second down, 10 at the 25. 150 to play for Florida. McDonald, a slot to the left. And dropping the throw again is Kerwin Bell. And brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 32. Messages. 16 at the 31 for the Florida Gators. A minute 41 to play. They trail 24 to 3. High formation as Kerwin Bell looks at the Georgia Bulldogs. And Kerwin Bell being chased back there. Throws out in the flat. He's got John L. Williams a completion. Williams drilled and knocked down at the 31. So a one-yard gain on that play. A lot of pressure from number 90, Henry Williams, coming from that weak side defensive end position. And we'll be right back after these messages. Irwin Bell's pass to Wayne Williams, the freshman running back coming out of the backfield from Titusville, Florida. Let's take a look 
the replay. It was a completion. Wayne Williams uh, has those fine hands. He's able to sit down in the near the linebackers, but uh, clearly not close enough to picking up the first down. And Georgia will get possession. So it was a fourth down play. Georgia takes over the football at the 17-yard line with a minute and 18 seconds to play in the game. The Bulldogs leading by a score of 24 to 3. We'd like to thank Norm Carlson, John Eumannick, Chris Cameron, the Sports Information staff at the University of Florida for all of their help. Also, we'd like to thank the Sports Information staff at uh, the University of Georgia for all of their help and preparation for this football game. And our spotters today, Dick Crago of Vero Beach and Robert Salat of Gainesville, for making it a nice afternoon for us here in the booth as far as having the right player at the right time. And there you see the agony on Galen Hall's face as he puts his head down into his hands. His team trailing 24 to 3, a minute 14 to play. Galen Hall coming into the game 15-0 and 1, so his record will drop to 15-1 and 1. And uh, Vince Dooley will pick up his 175th victory. Florida had won four straight Southeastern Conference games, beating LSU, Mississippi State, Tennessee, and Auburn. And the Gators' last loss in the Southeastern Conference, 10-9 to Georgia in 1983 here at this Gator Bowl. Florida's 18 games unbeaten streak falls by the wayside, and a new streak will have to be started pretty soon. Kentucky, the next game, and that will be at Florida Field next week. It is a sellout. Great crowd expected. Hard to believe that uh, the Gators have never beaten Vince Dooley two times in a row. Just a tremendous job. We talked about the stars of the game uh, before the kickoff, and we mentioned the uh, Vince Dooley's history and Galen Hall's record. And, uh, just a tribute to Vince Dooley to continue his domination over the Gators. Well, in two years as the starting quarterback for the Florida Gators, Kerwin Bell only has incurred one other loss, and that was in the opener a year ago at Tampa when the Gators fell to the Miami Hurricanes. So Florida doesn't have anything to hang their head about as far as record-wise is concerned. They have moved to number one in the nation. This, of course, will affect that as far as the polls are concerned. The seconds are ticking away. They're counting them off. And it is three, two, and uh, one. And the football game is over at Jacksonville's Gator Bowl as Georgia defeats Florida by a score of 24 to three. So a long, tough afternoon for Florida as far as trying to get points on the board is concerned. Um, Kerwin Bell, statistically, having a great afternoon. An afternoon that he, of course, is a sophomore, but any National Football League scout would look at a guy that's been able to rack up 400 yards passing against this kind of a defense and uh, would be pretty impressed. Well, from the opening kickoff, the Georgia Bulldogs dominated the line of scrimmage, and that was the key this Saturday afternoon. with um, some of the reporters as they get ready to go off the field. The uh, fans racing onto the field, some of the Georgia fans have broken through a barrier on the far side and are racing across the field. And the uh, security people are trying to hold them off a little bit. Of course, they're delirious about that big win this afternoon as that will certainly rise Georgia's stock, defeating Florida by a score of 23-24-3 here at the Gator Bowl. Jacksonville this afternoon. Jim, any more comments? Uh, not really. I, I need some uh, excedrin, I think. We'll have some more to say and uh, some other facts in just a moment, but right now we'll take time out for these messages. I got a first down. McCluskey inside the play that actually makes a, it's a fine play by their defensive cornerback, and they've got some good defensive players. They can really move. Here's a good run by Lars. Join the team behind the teams. Join Gator Boosters. Call toll-free 1-800-342-7851 for more information. National Car Rental. Well, we're back as the police and security people in Jacksonville are trying to keep the fans away from the goalposts over there. The uh, Georgia fans swarming onto the field after the game was over, looking to tear the goal down, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen this afternoon in the Gator Bowl. Well, it looks like it's Argentina out there in a World Cup final or something. They're obviously uh, excited.
excited about knocking off the number one team in the nation and uh, getting a bit carried away, but the, the police seem to have the situation under control. Just a Here's lot of exuberant energy. There you see uh, passing 408 for the Gators, 436 total offense, but look at 344 rushing the football, eating that clock up uh, for the Georgia Bulldogs. Just a complete uh, victory, offense, defense, special teams for the Georgia Bulldogs. Penalty-wise, Florida penalized only three times for 20 yards. Georgia six times for 41. Turnovers for the Gators two and for Georgia one. And time of possession, Florida actually had the football longer than Georgia. 32 minutes and 17 seconds. And the story is the scoreboard, though. 24 to 3 and a couple of big runs and some fine running backs for the University of Georgia, plus the blocking that they got up front, too. And the, and the big runs, uh, they struck like lightning when they had to and got on the board quickly.